One question that, that can come up with about sound is what the composer's desire is. And of course, the notation for music, for classical Western music, the notation is, is uh, almost too simple. It's not enough information, what you see on the page. It's not enough information. Uh, it requires a, a depth of understanding of that composer's style or the genre, but also uh, what they've heard, what they hear, what they what their experiences has been with saxophone or or any instrument, or what what their general ideas are. The one of the great advantages of working with composers is we can truly learn uh, what they hear, what that what is in their head. We learn from their experiences and we translate that. Somewhere along the line, there's a, there's a meeting where we are translating what they think, what they, what they hear, and hopefully they're allowing for us as an artist to meet them and find our own identity with a piece of music. Sometimes a composer will say, this is the sound I want. Uh, can, you, can, your sound be more, can your sound be brighter? Can your sound be darker? Can you, can you have no vibrato? Can you have more vibrato? Uh, can you bring you know, more intensity to the sound? Can you be thinking more about phrasing, line, and tension in the line? Uh, they will guide us oftentimes because the notation is not always clear. So part of that is our training. Part of that is who we study with, who's had the opportunities to work with composers, what, what, what teachers have a, a lifestyle of performing new music and contemporary music. I think in the end we have to still have our own path. The sound that we make is unique to every single person. There, there is a different sound possibility for every single musician in the world. Maybe that's one of the great gifts is that we, we can't and we don't need to sound like every single person. We do not need to sound like each, each person we can sound completely individual. Uh, as, long as, it, as long as we operate within a tradition, and it makes sense, it, it makes sense on an, on, an, on an academic level or intellectual level or an aesthetic level, it makes sense that we fit inside of this box. But we are challenged with, with some repertoire or some composers, we are challenged to move outside of that box. And that becomes, again, something that, that is impossible to script or, or to write down. There's no book. There are no books or there's no methodology to, to train you for the next piece. If you work with, with some conductors, they might, in an orchestra, in an or, a symphonic orchestra setting, a conductor may say, you know, saxophone less. Saxophone more blended, match the woodwind choir. Uh, you know, no expression, not too, not too, um, uh, not not too emotional, or you know, less, uh, less romantic. And other conductors will have the opposite. They will say, "Your sound needs, needs to be much more bravura. You must come through more. You know, this is this operatic tradition. You know, maybe Massenet, Bizet, or you move into Russian Russian music, or or of course American music. You know, Bernstein or Gershwin or something." And, and, a, and, and a conductor might demand, as a professional, that you move outside of your element where you are comfortable. Maybe you're not comfortable playing with more vibrato, and if you're asked to do it, it needs to be authentic and genuine, and it needs to make sense. And as we, as we get older in the profession, our ideas shift. Uh, I think the, the more influences, the more, the more experiences, the more life that we lead changes our sound. I think my sound changed when my daughter was born. I think my sound changed when I got married. Uh, I think my sound changed when I started teaching many, many students and they graduate and they go out into the world and I start thinking about 
what more I can bring to, the, to, to my instruction. Uh, I think my friendships, my deep friendships with some of the greatest saxophonists in the world has changed my sound. Uh, I love this. I think getting older, I think we start to lose our hearing. I think this changes our sound. I think as we go, get older, our, our, stru our structure, our muscular, skeletal, facial structure sh changes slightly. I think this changes our sound. And I, it allows us to at least, if we're aware of this, we can adapt with different equipment as the equipment evolves. And mouthpieces are not the same as they were 50 years ago. Reproduction, the lounge is not the same production as 50 years ago. The acoustic of the saxophone has improved from 20 years ago. Um, and, and I think if it's, a, if it's a very gradual change, then as our, as our, as our ears change and our, and our brain processes information, it's, it's really amazing to see how the production of instruments, uh, the variety and the diversity of instruments and models and uh, brand and all of this, it allows us to shift with our concept. I think there's an interesting question about uh, are we reaching a point in our profession where there is such, such a thing as a vintage sound? Or something very old. Do, if we, do we want to play an older instrument when we play music from that time? Do we want to assign a, 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 an idea of mouthpiece and style of reed or style of, of, of the instrument bore? Do we want to assign this to the repertoire? Some people do this. You know, traditional music or really old classical saxophone music, sans gêne on uh, you know, a, a, a saxophone from the late 19th century. Or, you know, when you play, uh, should we play uh, uh, Jacques Ibert on a, should we play Jacques Ibert on a, on a balanced action, you know, or a, or a, or a, a Mark VI? Should we play only contemporary music on a, on a, uh, you know, Series 3? I mean, these are interesting questions. Uh, some people like to try this, but I think the, the great, the greatest challenge is to be able to do all of it on the same instrument, on the same mouthpiece, not, not changing the reed, and, and making sure that the sound is a, is, comes from, from within, and it's a production. And it's a combination of, of embouchure, whole cavity, air production, and what's in your ear. It's the greatest challenge. Thank you.